Very good morning children. Today you will be learning about the chapter life processes. What is life processes? All the organisms need to perform some basic functions to maintain their life on the earth. The maintenance of living organisms must continue even when the living organisms are not physically fit or active, sitting idle or even during sleep. These functions are called as life processes. The life processes in our body includes the nutrition, the respiration, transportation, excretion, control and coordination, growth, development, movement and reproduction. Today you will be learning about the process of nutrition. The process by which the organism obtain and utilize the food is called nutrition. It is also called the process of intake of nutrients and their utilization by an organism for various biological activities. See, there are two modes of nutrition actually. The methods by which organism obtain their food. The first one is autotrophic mode of nutrition. The second one is the heterotrophic mode of nutrition. What is autotrophic mode of nutrition? The term autotrophic means Auto means self and the trope means nutrition. It is also called as self-nutrition. The organisms prepare their own food from inorganic raw materials like the carbon dioxide and water present in the surroundings by using solar energy. Now, heterotropic mode of nutrition. The term heterotropic means hetero which is many and the trope which is nutrition. It is the kind of nutrition in which an organism cannot produce its own food and depends on other organisms for its food, which is called as heterotropic mode of nutrition. Few examples are the bacteria, fungi, yeast. There are three major types of heterotropic mode of nutrition. The first one is saprotropes, the second one is parasitic and the third one is holozoic. Saprotrophs are nothing but sapro means dead or decayed organic matter and trophs means nutrition. Okay, the examples are few fungi and bacteria. The parasitic mode of nutrition. Parasitic means para which is other and site which is place. The organism that lives on host body and obtain food from the host for its existence are called as parasites. Examples are few fungi like Pusinia bacteria, few plants like cascata and animals like plasmodium, roundworms, leech etc. Now let's discuss about the holozoic nutrition. The term holozoic means feeding on solid food. The nutrition in which an organism takes the complex organic food materials into its body by the process of ingestion which is digested and absorbed into the body cells of the organism. This is called as holozoic mode of nutrition. Unicellular organism which conducts this mode of nutrition, the best example is amoeba. The multicellular organisms like all mammals which belongs to holozoic mode of nutrition. Now, let's learn about the nutrition in animals. Based on food habits, the holozoic animals are classified into herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. The step involved in the process of nutrition. The first step is ingestion. The process of taking the food into the body is called as ingestion. The second step is digestion. The process by which the large insoluble molecules of food are broken into smaller soluble molecules in absorbable form. This is called as digestion. The third step is called as absorption. The process by which the digested soluble food passes through the intestinal wall and enters into the bloodstream. This is called as absorption. The fourth step is called as assimilation. The process by which the absorbed food is taken up by the body cells for the energy, growth and repair. This is called as assimilation. The fifth step is called as ejection. The process by which the undigested food is removed from the body. Now, let's learn about the nutrition in human beings. The nutrition in man takes place through a human digestive system. The human digestive system includes a group of organs and their associated digestive glands. The digestive system consists of a long continuous canal called as alimentary canal. The human alimentary canal is a long tube extending from mouth to anus. It is 9 meter in length. 
it consists of the following organs the first one is the buccal cavity or the oral cavity the second one is the pharynx the third one is esophagus then stomach small intestine the large intestine and the anus now let's learn about buccal cavity the ingestion process in man starts from buccal cavity the process of digestion of food begins in the mouth first teeth are the hard substructures used to break the bigger food molecules into the smaller food substances there are 16 teeth of four different types namely the incisors canines premolars and molars tongue is a muscular organ which helps in identifying the nature of the food and mixes up the food with saliva saliva is produced by the glands called as salivary glands the buccal cavity has three pairs of salivary glands the first one is the parotid gland which is lying on the sides of the face the second one is called a sublingual gland which is lying below the tongue and the third one is submaxillary gland lying at the angles of the lower jaw about 1 to 1.5 liters of saliva is produced into the buccal cavity every day the saliva contains water salts mucus and an enzyme called as tialin the another name for the enzyme tialin is the salivary amylase the salivary amylase acts on the starch food molecule and glycogen and converts them into a substance called as maltose the mucus and the water make the food soft and slippery for the formation of the process called bolus they also protect the soft lining of the alimentary canal the digestion of the starch that is carbohydrate begins in the mouth first the partially digested food is then sent to stomach through 12 cm long funnel shaped vertical canal called as pharynx and then all the way into the esophagus the process of pushing food into the esophagus is called as swallowing or deglutition the process of chewing the food is called as mastication the process where the undigested food present inside the mouth is called as bolus the movement of the contraction and relaxation of the walls pushing the digested food into the stomach is called as peristaltic movement this occurs in the esophagus now let's learn about stomach it is a j shaped large muscular organ lies on the left side of the abdomen the partially digested food is further broken down into smaller pieces and churned to form a semi solid paste The wall of stomach contains the gastric glands which secrete the gra- gastric juice. The gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid, mucus, pepsin, gastric lipase and renin. What are the functions of hydrochloric acid? Hydrochloric acid softens the food. It makes the food acidic for the activation of pepsin. It stops the action of salivary amylase. it kills germs and bacteria to disinfect the food the most important function of hydrochloric acid is it converts the inactive pepsinogen and pro renin into active pepsin and renin what is the function of pepsin the main function of pepsin is to hydrolyze proteins into soluble proteases and peptones it's a enzyme which is active only in infants The main function of renin is to convert the soluble milk protein called casein into insoluble protein called as paracasein. Due to this, milk stays in the stomach for a longer duration. What is the function of mucus? The main function of mucus is to protect the inner lining of the stomach from the corroding action of hydrochloric acid as well as from pepsin enzyme. Hydrochloric acid cannot be produced by our body. it is produced by the bacteria named helicobacter pylori if mucus is not secreted the hydrochloric acid causes erosion on inner lining of the stomach and causes peptic ulcers now let's learn about the functions of stomach the stomach mixes the food with the gastric juice this process is called as churning of food it also softens the food with the help of hydrochloric acid the stomach stores the indigested food temporarily the stomach absorbs some soluble components such as glucose alcohol minerals from the food 
the indigested food is partially digested by the enzymes present in the gastric juice the last step is it regulates the passage of food into the small intestine the stomach makes the food softer and allows the food to pass to intestine through a valve called as pyloric valve the partially digested food then goes into a small intestine the exit of food from stomach is regulated by a muscle called as sphincter muscle and the sphincter is named as pyloric sphincter now let's learn about the small intestine it is the largest part of the alimentary canal it is about 6 to 6.5 meter long in an adult it is a site of complex digestion of food the small intestine receives the secretion of two glands namely the liver and the pancreas let's learn about liver liver is the largest gland in our body with attached soft pear shaped sac called as gall bladder the liver secretes bile juice which is alkaline and contains a bile pigment called bilirubin and biliverdin which are stored in gall bladder temporarily then what is the function of bile bile breaks the larger globules of fat into the smaller globules to make the enzyme to act and digest them it also prevents the putrefaction of the food the bile creates a medium for the pancreatic juice to act on food by neutralizing the acidity of the food bile has no enzyme and hence it has no chemical action on food now let's learn about the pancreas it is the second largest gland in our body it is a heterogyne gland in nature it is 12 to 15 cm in length and lies below the stomach it secretes a digestive fluid called as pancreatic juice This juice contains the digestive enzymes such as trypsin, nucleases, pancreatic lipase and pancreatic amylase. The enzyme trypsin digests proteins, the enzyme pancreatic amylase digests starch and the enzyme lipase breaks down the emulsified fat into fatty acids and glycerol. pancreatic enzymes act only on alkaline medium pancreas produces two types of hormones namely the insulin and glucagon this will be discussed later in the second chapter control and coordination the intestinal juices contains the number of enzymes which complete the digestion process the complex carbohydrates are converted into glucose proteins are converted into amino acids and fats are converted into fatty acids and glycerol the peptides with the action of trypsin converted into amino acids the sucrose in presence of invertase enzyme is converted into glucose plus fructose the maltose in presence of the enzyme maltase is converted into glucose plus glucose whereas the lactose is converted into glucose plus galactose in the presence of enzyme lactase all the end products of digestion are soluble in water and hence can be easily absorbed by the walls of intestine containing blood capillaries the inner surface of the small intestine has millions of tiny finger like projections called as villi the singular is villus the process of villi increases the absorptive surface area of the small intestine the larger surface area of the small intestine helps in the rapid absorption of digested food through the walls of small intestine the process of using the digested food is called as assimilation the blood carries the digested food to all parts of the body all the digested food is assimilated equally to all organs tissues and cells the digested food which is not used is stored in form of glycogen in liver now let's learn about the large intestine and anus the process of ejection takes place in large intestine in the end of the alimentary canal which is 1.5 long 1.5 to 1.8 meter long and 4 to 6 cm in diameter it receives the undigested food in form of semi fluid along with mucus and water the walls of the large intestine absorbs most of the water from the undigested food The large intestine contains three part namely the cecum colon and rectum cecum is a small pouch with blind tube attached to it called as vermiform appendix colon is the longest part of this large intestine 
it absorbs water from the undigested food and converts it into fecal matter rectum is the last part of the large intestine which stores the undigested food and expels or ejects out through us opening called as anus the act of expelling the feces is called as ejection or defecation the exit of feces is controlled by a sphincter called as anal sphincter thank you children